Hey everyone, in this lesson we are going to discuss everything you need to know about the common cold, including what causes it, risk factors for getting the common cold, and we're also going to talk about the signs and symptoms of the cold, how to distinguish it from the flu, and we're going to talk about treatments and preventative measures. So the common cold is also known as acute rhinitis. Acute rhinitis. So what is acute rhinitis? Rhinitis, if we break the word down, the prefix rhine means nose. You can think of a rhino, a rhinoceros. Rhine means nose and itis means inflammation. So it's acute inflammation of the nose, essentially. That's what common cold is. But specifically, it is a viral infection of the upper respiratory tract. So upper respiratory tract is the respiratory tract above the larynx. It is the most common acute illness in the developed world, the most common. And as we're all aware, there's a seasonal variance with highest number of cases in the winter months. And it's very typical that an adult will get two to four common colds per year, whereas a child can get even more, six to eight per year. Now there are many causative organisms that can cause the common cold. They're all viruses because this is a viral infection. So there are more than 200 viruses that can cause the cold. The number one category of viruses that cause the common cold are the rhinoviruses. And there are over 100 serotypes of rhinoviruses. So that's very easy to remember. Rhinoviruses are the same prefix. Rhino means nose, so rhinoviruses. So very easy to remember. And they are so common of a cause of the common cold that they are approximately almost a third to a half of cases. So 30 to 50% of all cases of the common cold are caused by rhinoviruses. And the second category of viruses that cause the common cold are the coronaviruses. The coronaviruses are the second most common category of causes. So we've heard about coronaviruses like the virus that causes COVID-19, but we're not going to talk about that here. We're talking about the four common coronaviruses in the population that can commonly cause the common cold. The four here are HCOV or human coronavirus 2293, HCOV NL63, HCOV OC43, and HCOV HKU1. So these coronaviruses can occur on a seasonal basis and they can cause approximately 10 to 15 percent of all cases of the common cold. The third most common category of causes of the common cold are the influenza viruses. So the influenza viruses usually cause about 5 to 15 percent of cases, so smaller portion. Parainfluenza viruses can also cause the common cold, roughly about 5 percent of cases. The respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, can cause, again, about 5% of cases. Now, there are other viruses that can cause the common cold as well. They're very rare and less likely to happen, but they can cause an acute rhinitis. These include adenoviruses, enteroviruses like the Coxsackie virus. Usually, if we have a summer cold, we could, we've heard of a summer cold before, it's usually a Coxsackie virus or an enterovirus that is causing the summer cold. And there's also metanumovirus that can cause the common cold as well. Again, very, very unlikely. So how is the common cold transmitted? So the transmission of the common cold occurs person to person. That makes sense. We all know that. Usually occurs from droplets or secretions from the infected individual. Usually secretions or droplets from the respiratory or upper respiratory tract. So you can think of mucus or runny nose that is essentially shedding the virus. So virus can be in the nasal secretions and then the virus can shed and it's shed the most on the second day of the illness. So that's the peak shedding of the virus. And the virus is shed from respiratory secretions, not from the saliva. So there have been studies looking at this. They've checked the saliva of individuals. Usually 90% of the time, the virus is not in the saliva, but it can be in some instances. So don't want to say it's not always from the saliva or not always shed in the saliva, but majority of the time it is not. So person to person is one way. There's also airborne and close contact as ways that this can be transmitted as well. The virus can be aerosolized and go out in the air in large and small droplets. 
and it can get onto hands. So we can transmit the virus through hand contact. And then we can transmit it through fomites. So fomites are indirect objects like tables and desks and chairs. So an individual who touches their runny nose and touches a table can leave the virus on the table. And that virus can last there for hours. It's estimated that the viruses can survive on surfaces for two to four hours. So what are some of the influencing or risk factors? The first one is sick contacts, the most important risk factor. If we don't have sick contacts, we're less likely to become infected. Not always though, because you can get it from fomites or indirect objects. A big one here, a big category of sick contacts are daycare children. Again, children are estimated to have about six to eight common colds in a year. So they're more likely to become infected with the common cold. So they're more likely to have it. And if you're exposed to daycare children more often, you're more likely to get the cold yourself. Smoking is the second risk factor. If you smoke, you're more likely to catch the cold. The third is psychological stress. We've all felt this before. If there's times in our life where we're very stressed and there's a lot of stress, we might be able to get through that stressful period, but then after we get sick and psychological stress can cause it some mild immunosuppression and can increase our risk of getting the common cold. The fourth risk factor is fatigue and decreased sleep. It is tied together with the psychological stress. If you're fatigued, you're not rested, you become more susceptible to getting the common cold. The fifth is decreased physical activity. So if you have decreased physical activity, you're more likely to get the common cold. And the sixth influencing or risk factor is having a history of upper respiratory tract diseases or respiratory allergies. So this plays into more the severity of the symptoms of the common cold. If you have a history of these issues, you're more likely to have a more severe and more long lasting presentation of the common cold. And the seventh is malnutrition. Again, all tied together with psychological stress and fatigue and a decreased constitution or decreased immune system function. What are some of the clinical features of the common cold? So before we get into clinical features, the incubation period of the common cold is anywhere from one to five days. So it can occur quite rapidly. The main clinical features are nasal congestion. So you're, you have a stuffy nose and you have rhinorrhea, a runny nose. So those are the two biggest clinical features you're gonna see with a common cold. And the rhinorrhea is bilateral, so both nostrils, and it's gonna be clear sputum. It might be slightly mucopurulent, maybe a little bit of a white opaque tinge to it, but it's mostly clear and it's going to be copious in amounts. You can also see sneezing with this. And you may see a cough, it's not necessarily going to happen, but you may see a cough. And a lot of times it's due to postnasal drip. You're going to have a lot of mucus secretions running down the back of your throat, causing irritation and cough. And we can also see lymphadenopathy, swollen tender lymph nodes in the neck. Some other signs and symptoms of the common cold include pharyngitis, so a sore throat, conjunctivitis, so inflammation of the conjunctiva in the eyes, and you may may have a low-grade fever, headache, myalgias, fatigue. Unlikely. If you have these symptoms, it's more likely to be a flu or influenza. But some viruses that cause the common cold can cause some of these other symptoms as well. And a lot of times it's the adenoviruses. So oftentimes a way to distinguish between the common cold and the flu or influenza is that influenza, you're going to have a fever with myalgias and a cough. Common cold, you're going to have nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezing. And those are the main distinguishing factors. Some symptoms do overlap and sometimes in influenza, you might have some nasal congestion and in common cold, you might have a little bit of cough from the post nasal drip. But a lot of times, as I mentioned before, common cold is your nose and nasal congestion, rhinorrhea. And in influenza or the flu, you're going to have fever, cough, and myalgias or muscle aches and pains. So now that we know the signs and symptoms of the common cold, what are some of the complications of getting the common cold? Some of the complications are usually due to a secondary bacterial infection. So the common cold is due to a viral infection and then it can suppress 
our immune system, it can cause us to be more susceptible to becoming secondarily infected with a bacteria. So some of the major complications or the most common complications include acute otitis media. So acute otitis media is essentially an inflammation of the middle ear. So here in these images, you can see the eardrum or the tympanic membrane that is bulging. And you can see in this image here, you can actually see pus or fluid in behind the eardrum that is causing it to bulge out. So when we look inside the ear with an otoscope, we can see the tympanic membrane or the eardrum bulging out. And that is a sign of acute otitis media. Another complication is sinusitis. So sinusitis is, itis is inflammation and sinus is our sinuses. So it's an inflammation of the sinuses. So it can be the frontal or maxillary sinuses or your ethmoid or sphenoid sinuses can be inflamed and this can cause issues as well. You can also see bronchitis as a complication. So inflammation of the bronchioles in our lungs. You can also get pneumonia. So pneumonia is not part of the common cold, but it can be a complication of the common cold. So you can get a secondary bacterial infection or a secondary pneumonia. In individuals with asthma or COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, they are more at risk because being infected with a virus or a bacterial infection can lead to an exacerbation of these underlying conditions. So they can get an exacerbation of asthma or COPD, so they have worsening wheezing and worsening shortness of breath. These are the complications that we can see with a common cold. With the common cold, symptoms usually are worst for the first one to three days, then they subside after about one week. So it takes about seven to 10 days for the common cold to eventually subside. And even after it subsides, we can see a post-infectious cough, which can occur for weeks. Again, it could be due to a postnasal drip. We can have a prolonged postnasal drip after having the common cold. And that postnasal drip can continue to drip in the back of your throat. You can often feel it and it can drip into your lower airways causing a cough. So sometimes you feel like you have to clear your throat or you feel a little irritation. You feel like you have to cough. That can last for weeks. So how do we make the diagnosis and how do we treat the common cold? Diagnosis of the common cold is a clinical diagnosis. We see a stuffy nose. We see a runny nose with clear nasal discharge. This is very, very common. It's a common cold. Treatment is supportive. This is a viral infection. A lot of times it is self-limited. It only lasts for seven to 10 days. You wanna look for some of those other complications like the cutotitis media and pneumonia and other complications that you can treat with antibiotics. A lot of times they are due to a secondary bacterial infection, but oftentimes this is a supportive treatment for the common cold. You just want to treat their symptoms that they are having. So again, it's symptom control fluids, rest, and warm saltwater gargling. You could use decongestants to help with any congestion issues that you have. And for those individuals who have a lot of postnasal drip causing a lot of cough and a lot of issues at night with cough, you can use cough suppressants. And for any other aches or pains, you can use acetaminophen or Tylenol. How can we try to prevent getting the common cold in the first place? So prevention is all about the risk factors we talked about earlier. We want to make sure we wash our hands. We want to avoid touching our face with our hands. We want to try to be as clean as possible. We want to try to sterilize any fomites in the environment that may be carrying the virus. Stress relief. So we talked about psychological stress can increase your risk for getting the common cold. So you want to have stress relief. You want to quit smoking. Smoking increases your risk of getting the common cold. And you want to eat healthy and stay active and try to get proper sleep. So again, wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. You can use hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your face because a lot of times the virus can get in through your mucous membranes. You wanna be as clean as possible. Try to sterilize any objects that might have been contaminated with a virus. Stress relief, quit smoking, eat healthy, stay active and proper sleep. So if you want to learn more about other infectious diseases, please check out my infectious disease playlist. 
And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. And as always, continue to live, laugh, and learn, and I hope to see you next time.